For the past few weeks, we've been cruising in the desert paradise of the Sea of Cortez. We've been sailing and soaking in the sun alongside our friends, hiking through the dry oasis, and admiring the breathtaking views. We're making the most of every opportunity to explore this magical place and find ourselves in Bahia Agua Verde on the Baja Peninsula, where our adventure continues. All right, well, today we're gonna go and do some swimming. There is a giant rock out here that we think will be a good little snorkel spot. So we're gonna check it out and maybe it'll be a great place to do a scuba dive as well. just got back from our little snorkel adventure and Gary managed to get a grouper. Oop, he's already flaying it. What kind is this one, do you think? It's a leopard grouper. It's a leopard? Mm-hmm. See all the spots? Very nice. So what are we gonna do this evening? We're gonna go try to catch more fish. I saw a lot of big grouper on snapper, but they were really deep, like deeper than 80 feet. So we're gonna go back with our fishing rods and drop some bait down. Yeah, Agua Verde is a cool little spot. The water is a bit greener here, <laughs> hence the name. But uh, yeah, there was lots of fish over there, lots to see. So this is the ballyhoo we got the other day, and I'm gonna cut it up into little chunks, like one inch sections. Um, so we have it to drop. And maybe we'll get lucky, maybe we'll get a grouper. What do you have going on? So I'm rigging up our fishing lines. And this last one I'm tying right now is a knocker rig, which is a hook that we'll put bait on and then just an egg sinker that can slide. And as you drop this down, the egg will go down and then the bait will float up above it. So that's on one reel. On another reel, we have a three-way swivel. The bait goes on a hook out here and then your weight goes on this. And then on the other rod, what we have is called a chicken rig and your weight goes at the bottom and then there's two hooks spaced out about a foot apart going up. So we're gonna try three different rigs and see which one's working and then I'll adjust accordingly. Yeah, I don't know anything about bottom fishing, so this so, will be good for me That's to learn. our weight. And then this one we call a chicken rig. So the hooks above the weight, so you let the weight. There's, there's actually two hooks on this one. So we're gonna bait one hook and two hooks. So that like float above the weight? Is that kind of the theory? Like yep. on the bottom? Yep, so you'll drop this like all the way to the bottom. Do you jig it or do you like... And then, no, you won't have to. I mean, if we're dropping in the right spot, you can just drop it till it hits the bottom. Girls who fish carted up by giant grouper. <laughs> we spent about an hour fishing before sunset with our friend Bill from SV Calico Skies. But there is a reason it is called fishing and not catching. What happened? Brooke didn't catch any fish with her rod and reel. So <laughs> all we have to eat tonight is the grouper that I speared. Boo, Gary didn't catch any fish with his rod and reel either. They were not biting, which is why I like spear fishing better, I think. <laughs> grouper for dinner. So I woke up this morning and I noticed that my forehead was like kind of burning. And I looked in the mirror and I must have got a nasty jellyfish sting yesterday when we were swimming. Check this out. I think it's still getting bigger. It's like a really gross pus filled bubble. What do you think, Brooke? 
Yeah, it's really weird. I googled like a jellyfish sting, but it's not really like a jellyfish, so I'm not certain, but it's definitely a weird thing. It looks like a burn bubble. It's so gross. <laughs> We are still here in Agua Verde. Yesterday we hung out on the boat and did some catch up, some computer work. But this afternoon we're gonna sail um, to a little area called Honeymoon Cove. But we're pretty much out of vegetables and we've heard that there's a little tienda here that's pretty well stocked. So before we pull anchor here, we're gonna run to the beach and check it out. Uh, we're hoping maybe we can get a few more potatoes or I don't know, we'll just see what they have. But anyway, Gary's head looks much better today. It's just the blister popped. So we have no idea what it was. It's just part of living out here with nature, I guess. Um, maybe a spider bite or something, not entirely sure. But anyway, let's get the day going. Dingy deployed. Sign says, welcome to Agua Verde. Looks like they have a school, a hospital, a grocery store, a couple restaurants. Uh, and here's a sign for the little tienda. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's birds. Yeah. Ooh, eggs. We found some eggs. Yes. Ooh, it's my All right, well, we were able to get a loaf of bread and a few potatoes. So that is awesome. We always just take whatever we can get. Um, but it's an interesting place here. It's really barren. It is super hot. Yeah, yeah, the people are friendly though. I think uh, it's probably very busy here in season when all of the other sailboats and cruisers are here. Well, as we were walking, we found out that there's another little mini market here. So we're gonna stop in there and check it out as well. We've heard it's a little better stocked, so maybe we'll get lucky. here. <laughs> we got lots of snacks and junk food that we don't need. <laughs> we got 10 eggs. Yeah, I just got enough to fit in our container. Happy about our score at the store, we headed back home to get ready for our afternoon sale. There wasn't much wind for our sail this afternoon, but we had to make moves north because tomorrow we had a very special birthday celebration to attend. Since we were motor sailing, I took advantage of our extra power and turned on my craft machine to make some decorations for tomorrow's festivities. And just as we were getting close to the anchorage, we got a little bit of wind to fly our spinnaker. Gary just got in to check our anchor. It's a little cove here so we're surrounded by these rocks it's pretty cool 
but it's pretty cozy. There's only room for like one boat in this little area here. Um, so we want to make sure that we're anchored in a good spot and not too close to the rocks. And it actually looks like it might rain. <laughs> which would be amazing because one life is so dusty and dirty. Uh, it would be really great if she got a little bit of a scrub. The clouds pass us by without a single drop of rain, leaving us to yet another hot evening in the desert. We are on the move to go to Kaz's birthday party. She wanted a flotilla. So this morning we ran over there and had a really nice waffle breakfast with everyone and got Delo situated. And now we're bringing one life over. Gary's single handing so I can help with the stern anchor. Our friends were anchored just a mile away. So it was only a short run to the next bay for the raft up party. We made it over here to this little cove and our plan is for Gary to drop the hook out in the deeper spot and then he's gonna back straight up next to Delos. Um, we'll tie next to Delos and then we'll put in the stern line to keep us centered in the middle of this bay. It's kind of rocky on both sides. Uh, so we wanna make sure that we stay center. Here we go. There's about 20 cameras on you so don't fuck it up. You can't hurt this one. <laughs> This is only the second time we've rafted One Life up to other sailboats. The first was our name-changing ceremony before we left Florida. With the help of the dinghies and a couple line handlers, we successfully managed to have a three-boat flotilla. <laughs> that was a process, but we got it done. Now it's time to have some fun. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> Preference for margaritas, Bloody Marys, or gin and something. What about you? One of the fun things about celebrating birthdays with this sort of lifestyle is you never know where you will be from one year to the next. We think Kaza got pretty lucky with this spot. There aren't many gifts exchanged, but there are plenty of amazing memories to last forever. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Kaza, happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. you. We love you! Ten! Wow! Oh, nice. Ten out of ten! Some people may think our days out here are always like this. Sunshine, drinks, clear water, and really good friends. But the truth is, days like this are quite rare, which makes these moments even more special. And the next morning was an abrupt reminder of reality. We awoke to high winds and rain because, well, the weather doesn't care about our hangovers or the plans we had for breakfast that morning. Our flotilla had to separate as quickly as possible. You want to keep the bow line on last? Yeah. Uh, that's because we're going to blow out. But I want yeah. to keep us the bow line on this thing around. That's going to pull the anchor chain. Okay. We moved back to the anchorage a mile away from our buddies, where we stayed overnight while we figured out our next move. Uh, I forget the name of this, but this is Tropical Storm, fill in the blank. 
<laughs> and we're getting the crazy winds and thunderstorms from it. Although we had a bit of weather from Tropical Storm Javier, it wasn't our main concern. There was another major hurricane forecast to come right behind it and directly hit the Sea of Cortez. So this morning we decided to come over to Puerto Escondido to get some fuel um, because we need to start making our way north. We've got a storm that's developing and it looks like it might get pretty gnarly for us. So we want to be ready to make a run for it. Once we fueled up, we decided to stop at the nearby town of Loreto. We had a friend there we wanted to see, and it was also a good spot to grab some groceries before we had to run away from the storm. Our wind didn't last, and we ended up motoring the last couple miles into the anchorage. Loreto is a town with about 20,000 residents. It's a popular tourist town and equipped with a nice dock for tour boats and dinghies. <laughs> Hola. Hola, buena. Well, there's a really nice breakwater here and a dock to tie up a dinghy at. The only catch is you gotta pay. It came out to 200 pesos, which is about $10. Since we'll only be here for one day, no big deal. And it's a nice secure place to keep the dinghy. So we're gonna get to exploring the Loretto and hopefully Margie's gonna come meet us. So Margie said there's a ton of stuff just nearby. So she said to walk around and find a place that looks good to us. She said they're all really good um, and that she'll come meet us. We walked along the Malacone and grabbed a few groceries before we met up with our friend Margie. Unfortunately, we weren't able to stay very long as the weather was forcing us to keep moving. <gasps> right in front of us. Cruising life. Sometimes you get back to your car and your seat's been shit on. <laughs> well, we just got back to the boat. It was really nice to meet Margie. Unfortunately, this weather isn't really cooperating with us, so we're not able to spend much time here. Um, so tonight we just kind of wanted to get back to the boat and relax a bit and get ready for our sail because uh, we'll probably not sleep too great the next couple nights. And I think it'll take us about two days to get us to Porto Don Juan in the Bella, Bay of LA where we're gonna hide out for a little while. morning, we awoke to clear skies, sunshine, and a calm bay as we hoisted our sails, but quickly we found ourselves motor sailing right into choppy seas and strong north winds. Despite these sloppy conditions, it did not stop Gary from fishing, and it wasn't long before we had a nice mahi on the line.
I absolutely love how happy Gary is here. Even though he is filleting in less than desirable conditions, he still does it with a smile on his face. We actually just dropped anchor in Ensenada, San Basilia. Yeah, and so for the last couple days, we've been looking at the weather and trying to make our plans. Um, our plan as of yesterday was to get fuel, make a stop in Loreto, and continue 250 miles north. We are gonna go to a little place called Puerto Don Juan, which is a hurricane hole way up towards the Bay of Los Angeles. Yeah, but we, um, so we started on that journey today and we really got our butts kicked actually. <laughs> we only made it 20 miles because we were heading straight into 20 knot winds out of the north. Yes, yeah, so it was so, not fun at all. So we bailed out here just to get a little break and reassess. And looking at the latest weather forecasts, it looks like the storm is gonna track up the coast of Baja and pretty much right where we were gonna head to. So we're changing our plans once again, um, and we're gonna pull anchor here in another couple hours and head back to Mexico mainland. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna sail about 100 miles across the Gulf of California to Guaymas or San Carlos. They're right next to each other. And we'll either find a nice cove to anchor in there or maybe take a slip at a marina, depending on what the situation is there. Yeah, um, we just think that maybe this is a better move at the time and hopefully this is the right one. I think this is our last shot of changing our plans. With our eyes on the winds, we knew if we waited a bit, the wind would change to be more favorable for our sail to the northeast. So I grilled the fresh mahi with a little bit of soy sauce, a little bit of garlic Thai seasoning, some sriracha, <laughs> and some Parmesan crumbs. And we're making little sandwiches out of them. Looks amazing. This is definitely a mood booster. <laughs> There's no way we could eat that whole fish in one meal, but I grilled all of it, and now we'll have food for lunch tomorrow. All right, well, it's almost midnight, and we've decided to get going, so it was really nice to pull into this bay and just take a little nap and have a nice dinner and shower. Um, we really needed that. But we think that if we average around five knots, that we can make it to San Carlos or Guaymas uh, before sunset tomorrow. So it's time to go. Feeling a bit of tension with the approaching hurricane and eager to get into a safe harbor, we raised our main in the dark with the help from the light of our headlamps and got underway. sailing because the wind is just about out of the direction that we need to go but it's a lot better than it was yesterday the wind speed today is only about 10 knots and it's a little bit more to the northwest instead of straight out of the north 
so we're at least able to motor sail and point straight at San Carlos, which is our destination, so that's good. And it's starting to get a little bit more choppy today, but we're making six and a half knots. So we've only got 38 miles to go and should be there in a little under six hours. So looking good for us to get to a safe harbor and get out of the way of Tropical Storm or Hurricane K. I think I'm gonna go down and try to make some breakfast. Brooke's down there having a little nap this morning and it's a little bouncy, but I think it would be nice to have a little egg sandwich. So I'm gonna give it a try. Waking up to a warm breakfast sandwich sure gets the day started off right. It doesn't take much to keep us happy out here. Good morning. Well, it's a beautiful day out here today. We have about seven knots of wind right in front of us, but the sea state is perfect. So we were able to get a good night's rest last night and we're only about 20 miles away from our destination right now. So. It's been really great. I'm glad we decided to go into that little cove and get some rest and let the winds calm down a bit. Uh, makes a big difference. Unfortunately, we've not been able to sail just because we don't want to spend our time tacking around out here. We want to get to where we're going and get settled as we heard the anchorage and the marina there is filling up quickly. So we want to get our spot before the storm comes. Yeah, it's really nice out here right now. And in a couple hours, we should be pulling into the harbor. So you can see why this makes a great little hurricane hole, because we're going in between those rocks up there, which is nice and protected. We always double check between all of our different charts. So we've got our Garmin charts, our Navionics charts, and we always pull out the guidebook and check what that says too. Sometimes they don't all agree, but we wanna make sure that we get in without hitting any rocks. Although we were going to be facing some crazy weather, a sense of relief rushed over us as we got settled into our hurricane hole. Okay, so we just dropped the anchor in about 14 feet. Um, it is high tide right now, so it's about four feet of tide here. Um, so in low, around low tide, we should be in 11 feet. Um, and I think we feel pretty good about that. It seems pretty protected. We don't think the fetch will be too much in here, but Gary just went to dive down to give it a check and make sure everything looks okay. I think this is 150, so we've got like way more scope out than we need. Winds are gonna start picking up tonight. So we expect them to start from this direction and then it'll clock around. And from the forecast, it looks like we might just be right on the edge of getting tropical storm force winds. So I'm just up here on deck, making sure everything's secure. And we wanna be sure that we're ready if we need to, to fire up the motor and use the engine and move the boat say if someone else is dragging into us or if we start dragging or who knows right so the idea is just to treat it like a passage and be as ready as we can well the sun is getting ready to go down here and we have the boat prepped we think um and ready for the storm so hopefully we don't see much but we just wanted to be ready um it, the worst of it is supposed to pass us around 3 a.m i think and <laughs> Of course, when anything bad happens, it always happens in the middle of the night. But we're feeling pretty good and we'll see what the night brings. It's about 
and uh, we slept all night, really. I woke up at like four, and there was like nothing happening. Um, but I think the storm's finally here. Hurricane K has arrived. We have like steady winds in the 30s now, maybe low 30s. And we've seen gusts up to 44 knots. Wow. <laughs> so I was just checking our chafe protection up on our anchor bridle. Everything looks good though. a.m. update coming at you live from San Carlos Harbor. Just riding out the storm. It's pretty bouncing here. There's a lot of swell coming in the little entrance to the harbor here, but it's perfectly safe. It's just a little uncomfortable, but we'll be fine. Hurricane activity? There's really not much to do today. We'll just be sitting on the boat on the internet all day, trying to get the Starlink set up in the cockpit. We'll see if it works here. We got our strap down. <laughs> it's a little rolly, but we think she'll be okay there. We've basically just been like lying around all day. <laughs> um, it's pretty comfortable on the boat, really. We're moving around a lot. But since we're facing into the swell, the motion isn't too bad on us. Do you want to take a look at the boat next to us and let me know if you think they're grinding? He's not out on deck, but he looks awfully close again. So it's around 2 p.m. now, I believe, and we're doing good. We're hanging on tight and everything seems to be going okay. Um, but the boat that was in front of us and to the side a little bit has, um, he's been dragging. And so Gary has his eyes on him now, but we're okay with this wind direction, but if we swing, we could potentially have a problem. So we've been trying to get his attention. We, he came up and looked outside and he just waved at us and went down below, but anyway, hopefully it'll be all right. right over here right now. Um, I guess we could lower our dinghy, but we really don't want to leave our boat unattended either, so. I mean, there's really not much that we can do. Like a dinghy's not gonna be able to like tow a boat against 45 knots of wind. Right. So hopefully he puts out more scope and hopefully he stops dragging here at some point because there's not much room behind him left before it looks like on the charts it gets shallow. Yeah, we, I don't know, he 
did come up, but then he went back down. So at least we know there's someone on the boat. We just watched the boat that was dragging. Um, he drags all the way past us, and then actually he's sideways to the beach right now. Um, it's heartbreaking to see, really, and I'm almost, like, my heart, I'm just feeling so gutted for him. But we tried blowing our air horn. Um, he was called over the radio several times, and he did come out once. We saw him, and he waved, and we, like, tried to get his attention, um, but he just went back down inside his boat. So as soon as it stops blowing so much, uh, maybe we can go try to give him some help, but right now we just can't risk leaving our boat. But everyone of the boats here that are out, everyone's at their helm, just like on the ready to go. Um, Delos is a couple boats tucked in a little bit more. They have a little bit more protection than us. I think they're in a really good spot. And there's a catamaran in front of us um, and he's at the helm and then our boat neighbor is at the helm as well. So we're just on the ready. Yeah, there's not, there's not really anything we can do for each other in these conditions. So, I mean, it sucks to have to watch him go by us like that, but there's really nothing we can do. Like with our dinghy, we're not gonna be able to tow him. Like there's really nothing we can do at this point. So when this settles down, we'll be able to launch our dinghy and go see if we can help him out. But, for now, everyone's just got to sit tight. So we're up here on the bow, just doing my regular anchor check. We've got our 65 pound Mantis anchor out, which has been holding us through this whole hurricane with no problems. And then we've got about 150 feet of chain. And then we use a nylon snubber, which is attached to two of our deck cleats. And I'm just checking for chafe on that snubber to make sure it doesn't snap off. And I've actually got our spare anchor pulled off the davit and on the deck here because the snubber was rubbing on it a little bit. So just to prevent that from chafing. And we have the, the spare anchor ready to go just in case. And we're anchored in how many feet? What's our scope? Yeah, so we're anchored in about, so we're anchored in about 14 feet right now, plus about a foot or two of height above the water where our anchor comes off. So 150 feet is about 10 to one scope. It's almost midnight here, and we're still seeing mm, winds of like 35 knots. Um, we just checked our anchor gear again, and we're gonna try to get some sleep. Um, we have a couple alarms set on our chart plotter. We have our anchor drag alarm and our shallow water alarm set. And we will check everything again in a couple hours. But it seems like things are starting to calm down which is really nice. It's like 30 knots now, but it feels like five knots compared to the 50 that we were seeing earlier today. Um, we just got word that another boat has um, dragged onto the shoreline as well. So it's definitely, uh, the storm has been a bit more serious than we initially thought it was, but we're on the Northeast side and sometimes that's the dirty side of the storm. It can, can be a little bit chaotic. But anyway, good night, and hopefully when we're talking to you in the morning, it'll be clear skies and much calmer. Morning, it's 7 a.m. Morning. Morning, it's about 7 a.m. Wind's down to 10 to 15 knots. 
just woke up and looked around and we see that there's a trimaran on the beach over there and then the boat that we saw drag past us on the beach over there. So that's pretty tough to see, but we made it through okay. Uh, it was sleepless few days. We dropped our dinghy in to see if we could be of any assistance to the two boats washed ashore. The Mata hole was slammed against a concrete seawall in front of someone's home. We could not tell the extent of the damage, but we could see the rudder was completely snapped off. With no one around, we were unsure how to help, so we went over to check on the trimaran. There was no one to be found at either site. We did hear from fellow sailors that both owners were on board at the time of their grounding and did not have any injuries. We are so incredibly thankful when life held strong during the storm and we are able to continue our journey north in the Sea of Cortez.